you, yeah, you, come here. Closer, come on. I was thinking, people seem to love those superhero movies these days, so why don't we get that dragon tattoo thing and turn it into one of those? I mean, that's a great idea. First off, just a quick reminder that I have started a new channel, Loverboy Media, and on that channel I'm now posting my Why I Love series that used to be here on this channel, as well as any other kind of analytical, experimental content I'm doing in the future. It's all gonna be going over there, so if you have not checked out that channel yet, be sure to do so. So, The Girl on the Spider's Web is the third live action incarnation of the Swedish Millennium book series, following on from the 2009 Swedish version and the 2011 version directed by David Fincher, Girl with a Dragon Tattoo, and that movie is just Mwah! This particular entry sees antisocial badass hacker woman Lisbeth Salander get herself caught up in this big kind of conspiracy thing after a job gone wrong that may or may not have something to do with unresolved family trauma. And look, I thought it was okay. I mean, it's a far cry from what Fincher would have given us had Sony have given him the money to make his next two movies for fuck's sake, Sony! You, you took, took something, something beautiful, beautiful away from, from us! How, How could, could you? you? Apparently, Spider's Web is supposed to be a sequel to the 2011 David Fincher version, and I can tell you right now, it 100% is not. At all. And yet, and yet, it has the balls to treat its audience like we know exactly who these people are, like we know their past, like we just know everything that has led them up to this point. And we don't. At all unless we are familiar with the books or with the previous movies. Luckily for me, I'm familiar with all that context, but for anyone who isn't, I mean, good luck getting any discernible character out of anyone. I think that that is mainly where the problem lies with this movie. I mean, it's all plot, no character. And while I think that that plottiness is handled well enough to be engaging for a lot of people, myself included, mostly, it really doesn't breathe for two straight hours. And because of that, there's no time to explore character. There's no one to latch onto to pull you through the story. So if you're not fully engaged by how much is going on, there's no one else within this story to be actually engaged by. I totally get that Lisbeth is supposed to be this cold, calculating, introverted person. And thanks to Claire Foy going really hard at this role, doing some really great stuff, she's able to carry the movie with what is probably the most emotive, or at least the most accessibly emotive take on this character so far, but I don't understand how any of the three writers didn't sit back at any point in the process and go, maybe we should take a breather and just explore some non-plot related character stuff because there's so many characters here to, to work with, let's just tap into some of that juiciness in there. I'm gonna give the movie some credit for I think doing, like, they, they tried to, but it was so standard and flat and sanitized and then we're straight back to Lisbeth kicking ass or getting her ass kicked that it just didn't really matter or have any impact or any purpose or weight or real dramatic oomph to it and that's what we want from our stories. We want some dramatic firepower, some ooh, but just none of that. None of that at all. And like, I don't know if Lisbeth is supposed to be a total vigilante. I don't know if it really carries across. Like, yeah, she's the writer of wrongs, but she doesn't seek those wrongs out. It's the wrongs that happen to be in her direct path. There's certain stuff about this movie where it's like, you just go out there and you get yourself involved in everything. I I don't know. Fede Alvarez continues to be one of the most exciting visual directors working in mainstream cinema today. And he's created another movie that is slick and stylish and incredibly creative. And for me, that was the most exciting part of this movie. But the thing that is also incredibly clear is that this movie is far more in the vein of Bourne than it is his previous movie, Don't Breathe. And I don't know if he really realized that. What I'm saying is this movie is more of an action thriller as opposed to a horror thriller, and those things work in completely different ways. A horror thriller is totally reliant on setup and payoff and making sure it takes the time for the audience to understand those things so that those things are clearly communicated so that the audience can anticipate stuff, can see it coming and feel the tension of the wait. We're waiting for that to happen. And that's something that Alvarez really nailed in Don't Breathe. 
but with an action thriller, it's all about uh, surprise and catching the audience off guard with twists and turns and keeping us on the edge of our seat where we're always, you know, there's uh, expect the unexpected type of thing. And I don't think he gets that anywhere near as well as he does with the horror thriller. Unfortunately, that disconnect with directing action shows the most in the action sequences, which all have, you know, mostly interesting setups and locations and great parameters for creating great choreography and a really high level of excitement. But the editing is so jagged and rough and almost incomprehensible because the directing is clearly not planned out in the way it needs to be to be clear and concise. I mean, the Bourne films are crazy shaky and stuff's going on everywhere. But the thing that Paul Greengrass understands is that you need to clearly show, you know, if you're shooting 40 different angles for one 30 second thing, make sure everything you're showing is clear. You're not just shaking the camera around. You're showing here's the knife, here's the hand picking it up, here's the swing, here's it connecting with the other guy's shoulder, here's the parry and the, you've got to show all of those things. Otherwise it becomes a blur. You're not just throwing the camera with the motion. That's not how that type of of directing works and I wish if Hollywood could actually see how it's supposed to be done and actually understand things before they try to replicate them we wouldn't have this problem. That tangent kind of turned into a general rant about action directing in general. I don't want to keep bagging this movie because as I've said I did have an okay time with it. I thought it was fine. I enjoyed quite a fair bit of it as kind of a style over substance type exercise. It's just that the girl in the spider's web basically wastes this stellar cast on non-stop action sequences. And I guess for some people that's fine, but in doing so, it totally misses the complexity and all of these interesting things that could have been found within this story. I think there's a lot there. The movie just kind of rushes over it all. It's all about the next plot point, the next plot point, the next plot point, rather than actually really diving into all of these little things in between and using these fantastic actors to really explore them. It's just one of those things where it's like Chanel versus Walmart. And so much of that comes from the fact that this movie tries to push Lisbeth as a superhero when she really isn't at all. All right, so those are my quick thoughts on Girl in the Spider's Web. Have you seen it yet? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Did you like this video? Of course you did. You can subscribe to this channel down there somewhere, as well as I recommend checking out my new channel, Loverboy Media, to stay up to date with all the other cool stuff I'm experimenting with. You can also follow me on Twitter at Loverboy Media and on Instagram. Those links are somewhere here, there, somewhere like that. We also have a Patreon that you can support us on. Thank you so much to anyone who is supporting us on there already. You're helping me not sleep on the streets, so that is fantastic with a bunch of cool rewards for you guys on there as well. Anyway, that was it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one.